The Journey of Marco Polo by Ben, Nanica, and Gu Young. Marco Polo was born in Venice, Italy in 1264. His uncle and father were successful trade merchants who had large success in Asia, so they constantly traveled there. Marco's father and uncle, who lived in China for most of Marco's early life, were close with the Kublai Khan. Marco's dad and uncle returned to Venice when, Kub when Kublai Khan asked if they could go to Europe to get 100 priests and a large amount of holy water and return with it so he could learn more about Christianity. Marco's father and uncle returned back to Venice in 1269. After only finding two priests willing to go with them, who would later leave the group, Marco's relatives headed back to China in 1271, with Marco this time. The trio traveled by land all the way to China, taking them a total of four years before they reached their destination. Marco and his relatives only originally planned on staying in China for a few years, but ended up staying there for over 23 years in total. Because of him diffusing with culture, Marco ended up being able to speak four languages. Kublai Khan was impressed with how smart Marco Polo was, so a few years later, when Marco was more grown up, Khan employed him as an envoy and had him explore parts of Asia which had never been seen by Europeans at the time, such as India, Burma, and Tibet. Later on, Marco was upgraded to being the governor of a Chinese city, and then as an official of the Privy Council. And at one point, he was the task inspector of the city of Yansau. Finally, after more than two decades, the Polos decided to return back to Italy. Kublai Khan had one last mission for them to do, and that was to transport Mongol princess to Persia while they were travelling back to Italy. They travelled by sea going back, and despite the boat originally having a few hundred people on board, the Polos and the Princess were four of the only 18 survivors, as for the rest had died from sickness. After two years of travelling, the Polos finally made it back to it Italy, where the three had been so diffused in Chinese culture that they had trouble adjusting back to normal Italian life. Later on, Marco went on a warship against the Chionese and was captured and imprisoned as a prisoner of war. In prison, he met the author Rusty Cello and he became friends with Marco. Marco told Rusty Cello about his adventures and Rusty Cello wrote them down. As soon as they got out of jail, Rusty Cello published the book and the book became famous all over the world. However, though, at the time of the release, while everyone loved the story and considered Marco Polo a hero, most were confident that the book was a work of fiction and didn't believe Marco's tales. Marco eventually died in 1324. Before Tang Dynasty, the basic unit of currency was bronze or copper coin with a hole in the center for straining. To avoid of carrying thousands of strings of coins, merchants in late Tang Dynasty started to trade receipts from the cozy shops where they had left money or goods. This became the world's first government-issued paper money. Since no recognized monetary system existed, trade in the early days was done through the careful bartering and exchange of goods by caravan trader. Their trade would be carried out in neutral places near water and green patches of land used for animal grazing. Caravans heading towards China were laden with gold, silver, ivory, and jet. On the other hand, while Marco Polo traveled around China, he was impressed with wealth and economy of the country. He estimated that 125,000 tons of iron is manufactured annually and had vast canal-based transportation system, which linked agriculture and mining areas to the developed cities and connected each other. Marco Polo marveled at the communication system and the paper currency, which helped to create what we see today as the foundation of a modern economy. When Marco visited India, he landed from Sri Lanka on the southeastern or Coromandel coast of India, and he accounts the new traditions and sites he encounters there. He describes the pearl fishing industry in the Gulf of Manar, and how rich it is in resources and sea life, and the trade of the precious water pearls. The Gulf of Manar has housed fishermen for as long as we can trace back. Fishermen from this region have a long maritime history. This region, as well as the coastal waters, used to be and still is one of the largest sources of natural water pearls. 
Thank you for watching.